facial piercings, the most common jewelry that you should wear or get pierced with. We're going to talk about things like nostril piercings, high nostril piercings, septums, eyebrow piercings, and anything you can pierce in your face, and a few that I don't really suggest getting done. Coming up next on Body Piercing Basics, episode number 84. So you, yeah, you, should skip around. For those who are new to the channel, my name is Davo. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I own and operate the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located here in Des Moines, Iowa, inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So when I talk to you about these things, I'm talking about a level of expertise that comes with being in the body piercing industry for well over 26 years. So what are we gonna talk about today is we're gonna talk about what would be the common or best option initially to get pierced with. Um, a lie, in the future, I might talk a little bit more about after the piercing is healed, but we wanna mainly focus on the types of jewelry that works best initially. And I break this up into about five different types of jewelry. The first type being circular jewelry. This would be things like rings, Caterpie rings, uh, seamless rings, beaded rings, circular barbells, and etc. The next one would be curved barbells. Now curved barbells are those banana shaped barbells that have two ends on them. Uh, they're basically a quarter of a turn. Basically we take a quarter of a circle and just cut it off. That's what that is. So that's a quarter turn. The next one would be post style jewelry. This is jewelry that's straight. Things like straight barbells, um, labre studs, nostril screws, etc. Next up, we're going to talk a little bit about surface to surface barbells, and we'll talk a little bit about dermal, microdermals, and dermal implants. So what we're going to talk about today is piercings that I do do that are going to include uh, eyebrow piercings, septums, nostrils, high nostrils. Um, but I'm also going to talk about a few that I don't do, and I'm a little leery that I would consider on the experimental side, things like bridge of the nose, um, anti-eyebrows, and surface-to-surface -surface trachuses, and dermal implants or single-point piercings. So let's start off with the rings. What can you pierce with a ring? First one would be nostril piercings. Uh, however, um, nostril piercings tend to be a much more difficult to heal with rings. It takes a lot more work and it takes a lot more isolation. Um, of course, you would not do high nostrils with this. The issues that come with rings doing with nostril piercings is it needs to be wide enough to make the area that's inside the piercing as flat as possible. It also needs to be big enough to wrap comfortably around the bottom of the, uh, the nostril. It can't be tight. It cannot put pressure on it. The problems with rings on nostrils is that it's going to have a lot more movement. It needs to be isolated more. You can't touch it. You need to avoid playing with it. You need to avoid contact with bedding, clothing, etc. Because not only can it move through the piercing, but it can also rock back and forth. This is why we generally advise starting with a stud style piece of jewelry, um, like a nostril screw or a post jewelry, I should say, like a nostril screw or a labre stud. The next one would be um, eyebrow piercings. Eyebrow piercings, it really depends on how pronounced the brow is. It's my experience that in a lot of cases, the curved barbell is a much heavier piece of jewelry and tends to add more pressure and not allow any room for swelling. It varies from person to person, and it's really a decision that I make depending on the person's anatomy. It does have the same issues like the nostril of getting knocked around more, um, but you don't have as much movement in that part of your body as you do on your nostril or as much contact. The last one would be septum piercings. Septum piercings generally need to be done with a ring so that you can actually see that your septum's pierced. Otherwise, they could be pierced initially with a post-style piece of jewelry. It's just one of those things where why would you do that because you could never see it. Uh, this can include, and probably the most common or what I generally suggest, is doing it initially with a curved bar or circular barbell and that, that has been expanded from three-eighths of an inch to allow space in that 
uh, that it can easily be flipped up and down, especially if you work in a profession that may frown on you actually having that particular piercing. So it gives you the ability to hide the piercing while it's healing. This brings us on to curved barbells. The only thing I'm really gonna suggest that you do with a curved barbell um, out of this grouping of facial piercings is gonna be eyebrows. In some cases, especially if the eyebrow is not really overly pronounced or it's very flat to the body, it's gonna be a better option to do that with a curved barbell than it is with a ring or anything else. Um, the only, like I mentioned earlier, the two main disadvantages is that it doesn't allow a lot of room for swelling. Um, it does sometimes kind of act like a finger that can get caught on things and uh, it's heavier. So it's one of those kind of trying to find that balancing point. After an eyebrow is healed, you can wear pretty much either or, as long as the ring is properly sized and not too small. Let's move on to post style jewelry. And this is probably the most commonly used out of these. Uh, the first one would be, of course, nostril piercings. Nostril piercings just heal easier with either a, if you're old school like me, a nostril screw or a flat back labret. This is the same thing with high nostrils. They definitely need to be done with a LeBray style piece of jewelry, basically because it's gonna be really complicated to have that wire that far up in your nose. Um, I have done it before and people have not seemed to have any issue with it, but it's one thing you wanna consider. The thing with nostril screws, and I always try to make this clear, is that they can be adjusted to make them more secure and more tight. Um, generally, most piercers will do this for free. Um, or at least what they normally charge for jewelry changes, which don't even get me started on that. Next one that I would definitely suggest doing with a post is bridge piercings. Um, it's a piercing I don't do, but it's my, ex over the years, what I've seen as far as people with good results and people with poor results, usually a straight piece of jewelry works best. If they say that they need to use a curved barbell to get it to more inward, it might be an issue where you don't have the right anatomy for this piercing. Um, at least that's my general um, experience that I've had with people that come in with that. And they are more prone to migrate. Uh, there's something about that flip-flopping effect that uh, curved barbells create. Plus, instead of having a straight line, you have this curvature. Um, so with that one, I would highly suggest, if somebody suggests that you do it, with a straight barbell, eh, yeah, or a curved barbell, that you, you, you kind of walk away. Maybe look for someone else, or maybe it's just not the piercing for you. Now let's talk about surface-to-surface -surface barbells. Surface-to-surface -surface barbells are specifically made to be put in surface-to-surface -surface piercings. They're shaped kind of U or kind of like a sharp U, um, basically designed to kind of sit under the skin with no angles and no pressure. Uh, what it does is it eliminates that outward pressure as much as possible. With surface to surface barbells, I don't suggest, for example, doing surface to surface trachis or surface trachis or whatever the kids are calling it this week, which is located right in front of the trachis. I do not suggest doing that with curved barbells or any other type of jewelry. They need to be done with surface to surface bars. And if the person who's doing the piercing doesn't have that or doesn't give you that option, chances are they don't stock it and chances are they don't have a lot of experience with surface to surface piercings. The same thing goes for anti-eyebrows. They need to be in that, they, surface to surface barbells are gonna be your best option. Um, curve barbells, they tend to cause so much outward pressure that they're gonna cause issues. Another thing on Anti, or an anti or eyebrows, God, that's a mouthful, and surface-to-surface tracheses, is both of them are experimental piercings. Um, the person that's doing them should have a lot of experience with surface-to-surface -surface piercings. Um, it's a very kind of niche thing. Uh, it really is gonna depend also on what your tolerance is for that style of piercing. Some people do really well with them. A lot of people, I would say even the, I'd say the majority of people do not do well with them. So if you're considering getting it done, understand that there's a risk that it will reject. Same thing with the bridge in the nose. And are you okay with living in a, with the scarring in that area before you get it done? One final thing on anything that's done with a service to service barbell is you cannot remove the jewelry and replace it. Usually, uh, once you remove the jewelry, that piercing is pretty much done for. 
Uh, it's, it has a lot to do with the angle and the way that that piercing heals. But in my experience, once you take it out, you, you're not going to either be able to get it back in or it's going to pretty much start rejecting as soon as you get the jewelry back in. Last one, because I know it'll get brought up, is dermal, microdermals or dermal implants or subdermal or the eight single point piercings. Basically, uh, these are these single point piercings that are usually located, a lot of people do them um, next to the eye, up in this cheek area and et cetera. Um, a couple of different things that you need to consider when getting that done is A, once they're in, they stay in. You can't take them out. You can't replace them. You can't take them out for surgeries or emer medical emergencies, or if you end up in a situation where people require you to remove it. Uh, and you cannot change out or interchange that jewelry. The ends, yes. And it's the same thing with the surface to surface barbells. You can change the ends, but the actual thing you can't. The other thing is, is unlike even surface to surface piercings, I, it's usually going to require specialty tools and expertise to remove the jewelry if you ever need it removed. With service to service piercings, and I'm kind of going down this a little bit more than I originally had planned, and I probably should do just a whole video on those. Um, in dermals, I already did one. It needs to be in an area of your face that doesn't move a lot. If you have a lot of movement in that area, it's probably not going to work. The other thing is, is you want to consider that it's as far away from areas that heavily come in contact with clothing, bedding, towels, etc. cetera. Uh, there are piercings that are very fickle in a lot of cases, and it usually takes a tug one way or another or a quick amount of trauma for them to suddenly just start migrating. So that's all I've got to say on facial piercings and the most common or best jewelry to use. If you found the video helpful or entertaining, please, Hit the like thing and let me know that you liked it because we like it when you like it. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. Hit that notification bell so that you're notified every single time we post something. If you have any questions or you'd like to add to the conversation, please leave a comment. I generally answer them when I have time. Also, other members of the community will generally get in there and answer if it's an interesting topic. If you like merch, you like swag, you like t-shirts, you like fun stuff, check out our merch store. A link is in the description. There's also one of those bars. It helps us to support the channel and uh, helps us to buy more merch, generally. Till next time, here's hoping all your piercings heal with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see if your body piercing needs in the future. Thank you for watching, everybody. For those who watch us on a regular basis, I'm sorry about the delay. We haven't been bringing out videos as quickly as we normally do. Um, this is in part because of some medical or some uh, some family uh, emergencies and et cetera that's been going on in my life. Um, I think things are going to go back to normal now, hopefully, because I'm done with it too much at once. So have a good day. Take care of one another. Don't put off what you can do today. And we'll see you soon.